Yes, good, good afternoon, everyone. Shall we get started? Thank you, thank you so much for spending your lunch time with us. This is the event to celebrate the International Day of Cooperatives that in fact was uh, Saturday, the 1st of July, but uh, so this is actually the month of the cooperatives, or perhaps the year of the cooperatives we're still celebrating. And the theme of this year is precisely uh, cooperatives ensure no one uh, is left behind, which is pretty much aligned with the most fundamental imperative of the 2000, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And I may just quote uh, my boss, the ILO Director General uh, Guy Ryder, that said that uh, um, making this work a reality for all is embedded in the U UNDG, in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. That means particularly attentive to the situation of working men and, and women who are at risk exclusion of poverty, including persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, migrants, and refugees. So cooperatives with their very much uh, people center a uh, focus and founded on solidarity and members' ownership are very well placed vehicles to promote more inclusive societies and economies. And this is very much, and, th and there is already a lot of evidence that co cooperatives in action uh, can promote equity uh, and inclusion. Producers uh, and service, service cooperatives of um, indigenous peoples, for example, have enabled them uh, to secure livelihoods, create decent jobs, and access uh, to, 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 to markets. Um, as you know, um, worldwide, there is a large percentage of uh, women and men that are engaged in the formal economy, and we also see uh, cooperatives as an important vehicle for the transition uh, from the informal to formal uh, uh, arrangements. In, the overcom in overcoming uh, decent work deficit 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 deficits, workers and entrepreneurs in the formal economy have devised different solidarity mechanisms, including cooperatives, to improve their livelihoods by gaining access to a range of services and marketers to practice a uh, workplace democracy and to engage in collective action. So, however, there is a still, there's still a long way to go before cooperatives' potential fully tapped and in some areas, uh, it remains very large and explored. Cooperatives could, for example, play a, a powerful role in efforts to eliminate uh, child labor, forced labor, uh, and discrimination at work. So on behalf of the ILO Director General, um, I would like to reiterate our commitment to working in cooperation with the member states, our social partners, and our, also uh, with other uh, UN agencies uh, and uh, in promoting uh, the cooperative movement in the scaling up and expanding the work of cooperatives to end all forms of poverty, fight inequalities, and tackle uh, climate change while ensuring uh, that no one is left behind. We have a, 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 an excellent panel um, um, before us, um, and, um, and now it's my pleasure to uh, invite Mrs. Uh, Daniela Bass, the Director of the Division for Social Policy and Development of uh, DESA, to also deliver her welcoming remarks. Thank you, Vinicius. Good morning, excellencies, ladies, gentlemen. Some of you are also my friends, if I may say so. Uh, cooperatives. Here in the United Nations, I'm the director of the Division for Social Policy and Development in DESA, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. And uh, the division I lead, I have the honor to lead, as already Vinicius has somehow mentioned, uh, houses for the department, the focal points for the whole United Nations system on youth, older persons, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, and issues such as the family and cooperatives. Cooperatives, therefore, is housed as the focal point for the whole United Nations system in the Division for Social Policy and Development in DESA. And then we also have a group of six that are sitting on this table that form COSP, which is a group of representatives of the cooperative movements, representatives also of the United Nations family. And Besides this, cooperatives to me are very important because they are ingrained in my DNA since I was born, being Italian. And in Italy, 
cooperatives play a major role. So it is something that I really feel and understand since I grew up, the relevance and the importance of, and the power of cooperatives, the power. They have power and they empower people. Isn't this beautiful? And they are people-centered. And though they are enterprises, they are social enterprises. The profit becomes the, how can I say, what is the opposite of poverty if not prosperity? The profit becomes the prosperity of those who work in the cooperatives world. And that's how then cooperatives share their profit, which is their prosperity, with the society as a whole. So when I think of cooperatives, I think of some key words that are very important in the United Nations, but also extremely important outside the United Nations. And this is one of the powers of the cooperatives. People, integration, inclusion, accessibility, mobility, participation, and partnerships. This is what cooperatives means to me and to the United Nations. And this is again power. Power to empower. Now, when we think of important topics such, such as those that ILO faces on a daily basis, that is employment, labor markets, etc. And if I think of the issues we deal with in the division I lead, that are the social groups I mentioned earlier on, for specific themes uh, that derive from the Copenhagen summit in 1995. Find ways to eradicate poverty for the social groups I mentioned, youth, persons with disabilities, older people, indigenous peoples, families. Promote employment and decent work. Social integration and social inclusion. Reduce the gap of inequalities. What all these make you think of, if not of cooperatives? This is what cooperatives do on a daily basis. They promote participation, inclusion, engagement, prosperity. And they never, ever forget people. So I would like just to share with you some basic facts about cooperatives to show you why cooperatives ensure that no one is left behind. And so it shows us the power of cooperatives, the power of inclusion and participation. According to some data we have at our disposal, a couple of statistics. Since the meeting that just finished before us was talking about statistics, so allow me to pop in a little bit of information on, on bring to you uh, some statistics. According to the first ever global cooperative census conducted by my department, well, my, the department I work with and for and in, uh, DESA, more than 12,500,000 people are employed by cooperative enterprises worldwide. Our census also showed that the combined annual revenues of world cooperatives are greater, greater than the annual GDP of France. This is a great force for the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, for the implementation of the 17 goals, and the very first one, which is about poverty, is also the overarching theme of the whole agenda, which is also the theme of this year. Uh, when it comes to ECOSOC. So the cooperative movement brings together, all in all, one billion people around the world. I could go on with other statistics, but I want to give you one example now, because this is the beauty of cooperatives, pragma pragmatism. For example, more than 70 rural electric cooperatives in Bangladesh connect about 47,650 villages 170,000 rural irrigation pumping stations and 30 million people to the electric grid, with more 
than 219,000 kilometers of distribution lines in areas in which services were not previously available. I have a long list of examples my colleagues gave me here. I know that I was asked just to give opening remarks and this becoming a speech, and this was not the intent. However, to conclude, with our collective efforts and with the support of cooperatives in all areas that they cover in a sustainable manner, we can have the future we want where no one is left behind. And I would encourage you all, during the discussions we're having today, to decide which topics you think you would like to bring to the table, to the platform that the United Nations gives to many stakeholders, governments, civil society, private sector, NGOs, etc., etc., and other institutions what topic you would like to bring to the table during the next Commission for Social Development, which will take place at the end of January throughout uh, the 8th or 9th of February. And the theme is strategies, strategies, strategies to eradicate poverty. And I'm sure that cooperatives can bring this topic to, uh, to, that, to that level, to the level of uh, uh, discussions held during uh, intergovernmental, uh, uh, when intergovernmental subsidiary bodies throughout ECOSOC to bring the insight then to the attention of ECOSOC and later on in forms of uh, possible resolutions to the General Assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Daniela, for your leadership, for the passion that you uh, put in all these issues. And it's now uh, my pleasure to invite uh, His Excellency, Ms., uh, Mr. Hiroshi Minami, who is Deputy Permanent Representative of, the, of Japan to the United Nations. So Mr. Minami, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. And at the outset, I would like to begin by expressing my gratitude and uh, thanks uh, to be invited here and to be given the opportunity to speak in this uh, event. I cannot stress too much that the participation of diverse multi-stakeholders is essential for the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals. Next week, our Foreign Minister, Kishida, will come to New York to make a presentation in the Voluntary National Review, VNR, in the HLPF. And in that opportunity, uh, the, he would like to stress and emphasize the importance of the establishing partnerships with various stakeholders. Among them, uh, the stakeholders, uh, cooperatives are one notable and unique example of the, uh, the such stakeholders. As uh, the uh, concept paper of this event says, the cooperatives are one of the best kept secrets in the SDG toolbox. And the, as a matter of fact, I am just looking at this clear file which was just distributed by our colleagues and the, I'm a bit surprised to learn that the, uh, over 65 million people in Japan are the members of the cooperatives because the, uh, in Japan the population uh, in total is uh, 125 million. So that means the half of them half of the Japanese people are the members of the cooperatives. So it's a huge number indeed. And as a Japanese, as a matter of fact, I did not know that. <laughs> and the cooperatives are autonomous and democratic, and democratic organizations uh, formed by the people to reap common benefits. So and the cooperatives are well positioned to play an important role in the implementation of the 2030 agenda. And the cooperatives are not NGOs nor are they purely private sector. Mm -hmm. So, however, they have expertise, human resources, and financial resources as well. So, cooperatives in Japan, which first developed as uh, mutual collaborations in the area of agriculture, have played an important role in the development of local communities. They are benefiting many sectors such as forestry, fishing, consumers, medical care, welfare, health, and labor, all over the, the uh, fields. Here, I would like to emphasize that the cooperatives also play an important role in expanding and promoting the SDGs into activities at the regional level, since they have wide networks across the country. And the, actually, this clear file said that the, they have uh, 
35,600 locations in Japan. So they are acting on the ground, very close to communities and people. Moreover, the activities of cooperatives are not limited to the domestic context. Japanese cooperatives often shared their experiences with the cooperatives in other countries, and they have actively used their international networks to, for example, train agriculture cooperatives and support farming overseas. I understand that several cooperatives will present their efforts and initiatives at this meeting. I hope that the many in innovative practices to be shared amongst the past participants here. I also hope that the, they subs subsequently conveyed back to the field will contribute to the implementation of the SDGs in each country. In closing, I would like to take this opportunity to mention that the Japan cooperatives will be holding a booth at the uh, uh, Foreign Minister Kishida's reception at the uh, delegate's dining room on the evening of the 17th, next Monday. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ambassador. It's really uh, impressive, the size of the cooperative sector in, um, in Japan. And uh, it's very good to learn that uh, this issue uh, will be addressed in the Japanese uh, Voluntary uh, National Review uh, next week. So now let me turn to those who are hands-on in the process, who's, those who make the cooperative movement and the cooperatives uh, happen uh, and succeed. Um, so let's hear the cooperative uh, voices. And, um, and it's my pleasure now to invite Mr. Charles Gold. He's the Director General of the International Cooperative Alliance. So, Mr. Gold, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very real pleasure to be with you today and to be able to report to you on the uh, progress that we're making under our uh, Co-ops for 2030 uh, platform. You should have received a copy of this first annual report when you came in today, and I'm gonna refer to that in, uh, in just a little bit. Uh, when we, uh, as cooperators, talk about uh, sustainability, uh, we're not simply talking about the, uh, the good health of the, of the planet. We have a very comprehensive idea in mind. Uh, we also see sustainability as reduction of poverty, as uh, good business governance, as the evolution of local and national uh, structures that are free from corruption, uh, creating decent local jobs, using local products and services, uh, stable long-term partnerships th that respect clean, green energy, good employment practices that are free of discrimination. Uh, in short, uh, inclusive development. Uh, in fact, our biennial conference this year, which will be in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in November, uh, is under the theme of uh, people-centered development. And our uh, keynote presenter there will be uh, Gro Harlem uh, Brundtland, the former uh, Prime Minister of Norway and Director General of the World Health Organization, who uh, chaired the Brundtland Commission that led to the Brundtland Report uh, that, that still uh, has the widest accepted definition of sustainability as uh, the, the process of meeting the needs of the present uh, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. And so we will be focusing on this theme uh, at, that, uh, at that conference. Uh, we believe that uh, cooperatives are actually inclined toward sustainability by their design. It's not simply a set of values that they've adopted, but they, they have a symbiotic relationship uh, with their communities. And it's a, it's a special relationship that goes beyond simple business structures. Uh, they emerge from and they're rooted in their communities. Uh, they have inherited traditions that are concerned about the health and well-being of the individuals in their communities, and they see themselves as having a a very real responsibility to be ethical and to be uh, socially uh, responsible in all of their activities because their success is, is really based on their ability to support those communities in a sustainable way. Uh, in order to bring greater focus 
to the collective sustainability of the cooperative uh, movement, uh, we created a co-ops for 2030 uh, platform. Uh, and that's what this report is about. Uh, the purpose of this, of this initiative is to position cooperatives as a key partner uh, for achieving the 2030 uh, development agenda, to unite cooperatives under a common advocacy and communications campaign, and to raise awareness among intergovernmental, uh, regional, national, and local institutions about the importance of cooperatives in achieving uh, the SDGs. So we created this online platform at uh, coopsfor2030.coop uh, to help cooperatives learn more about, about uh, the SDGs and where they can make specific pledges toward achieving the SDGs. And then we use the pledges and the progress uh, reports as a global advocacy tool and also for, uh, for education. Now we launched this uh, online platform uh, here at UN headquarters um, last year in June at that year's uh, International Year of Cooperatives event. Uh, and now you can find uh, pledges from over 30 countries uh, on, that, uh, on that platform. And uh, in fact, you'll find that this report shows that cooperatives are working in each of the 17 SDGs, which is, which is quite an achievement, quite a statement about the, the reach, the scope, the impact, and the values uh, of, uh, of cooperatives. So it demonstrates, uh, we think, that cooperatives act in accordance with an ideal that rising expectations can be met for everyone and not just for a few. Uh, that we can provide decent work and livelihoods, uh, that uh, we can do this responsibly, sustainably, and not in a way that destroys communities or, or the planet uh, for those coming behind us. Uh, it was 122 years ago uh, this year that leaders from the cooperative movements uh, around the world came together and created the International Cooperative Alliance. And they had a vision that the uh, cooperative model could be an instrument to foster what today we would refer to as social justice. Uh, since that time, we've grown now to represent cooperatives in over 100 countries. Uh, we know that 250 million people uh, uh, make their livelihood through cooperatives. Uh, we know that 100 million households receive their health care through health cooperatives. Uh, we know that uh, the 300 largest cooperatives have annual turnover exceeding uh, $2.5 trillion, just the, just the largest 300. And we know that there's something like a billion uh, members in cooperatives. So we were delighted last year when UNESCO uh, added cooperatives to its, uh, its list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Uh, a lot of people are aware of UNESCO's list of world heritage sites. Uh, but they also established a, a list of intangible uh, cultural heritage to uh, acknowledge that uh, the human experience isn't defined only by physical monuments and, uh, and places, uh, but equally by practices and, uh, and traditions. And uh, in, uh, in putting cooperatives on that list, they recognize that they strive for a more just development of global, uh, global globalization processes. UN uh, agencies and member states uh, can help us by seeing cooperatives as partners in achieving the SDGs and in bringing cooperatives to the table when uh, policy is set on sustainable development. And uh, we encourage governments to include cooperative contributions in their national implementation plans for the 2030 uh, agenda. Uh, we need to ensure that people understand the cooperative story uh, we have a proven history, uh, we have demonstrable impact, uh, we have scale that is affecting hundreds of millions of people, and uh, we believe that our values are the only course for a future that treats uh, all people and not just a few uh, with decency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Gordon. Congratulations for the, all the good work the International Cooperative Alliance is doing. Unfortunately, we need to leave this room at 2.30, and I would kindly ask uh, the next panelist to, to, to be concise, to, uh, to no, not speak more than five minutes, so we can have a little bit of discussion and, um, 
and watch the video and uh, and have the conclusions. So it's my pleasure now to invite uh, Mrs. Um, Nanjina Saad. She's the president of the Indian Cooperative Network for Women. Madam, you have the floor. Thank you very much uh, for having invited me on the panel today. It's indeed a privilege. First of all, I'd like to give my greetings from the Working Women's Forum and the Indian Cooperative Network for Women, Chennai headquarters, and I've come a long way, and it's uh, hotter than here uh, in, in warm New York, uh, and, uh, but it's a warm greetings from all the members of our forum. We work in 14 cooperatives in South India, in the states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh. We have about 500,000 poor women who are rural and urban workers in around 6,000 slums and villages. You see photographs of them uh, and, uh, you know, on the uh, monitor too. We started with 10 million Indian uh, rupees and rotated it to 300 million Indian rupees with a 99% success and have given over a million loans. All women board, all women CEOs, software enabled 17 years ago, transparent women-led governance where children of fisher people, girls from labor families are managing the IT and software digitalization. We work with 267 trades in the unorganized sector, which is unregulated, unprotected, uninvested, including fisherwomen, headloaders, lace makers, silk weavers, petty shopkeepers, and several photographs that have been exhibited. Uh, before uh, having said that, I'd like to make one or two points on SDGs and uh, women, particularly with regard to cooperatives. As far as SDGs, and uh, women are concerned, I think it's an absolute breakthrough where investing on women, gender equality is seen as a core and an important process for growth, peace, prosperity, and poverty reduction to take place. Secondly, uh, the fact that we have a meeting uh, uh, at such a high level dialogue area shows that cooperatives are ideal mechanisms for women due to their democracy and, madam, as you said, participation, as well as the socio-economic features, but, but, but if women are in the decision-making process, as our case study is going to exhibit. Goal five of gender equality and empowerment of women and girls could be possible if one, two, three, and some other goals, the enabling environment, go together, again, as our case study says. And the case study is not made for today. It's already been written up in 1995 in UNESCO, in the Journal of Poverty and Women, as a special uh, issue. So this case study on gender inequity was written 15, 17 years ago. The SDGs has brought us back, back into fashion. Th th that's about it. Now, the gender inequity model that I am going to talk about has altered gender relations, challenged structural poverty, spearheading social integration, and transforming labor into capital, but the surplus is in women's hands. Indeed, as somebody mentioned about culture, it is a counterculture by very poor women. Mm. And uh, we identified five interwoven threads of oppression in the beginning. Class exploitation, caste inferiority, male dominance, isolation in a closed world, and physical weakness. The first thing we did was we identified credit on easy terms for women, for their work and life as other institutional forms had failed to support them around which we uh, put in health and education, daycare, other stuff, and gender-based violence, which is also such an important part. And we're one of the few cooperatives in the world which has gender-based violence as a product. Because most bankers would not like to touch gender-based violence, but I think it's, if you want a holistic development of women's empowerment, uh, SDG number five, you need to bring in all of this. Now, the new capital accumulation process, as we call it, at the base, where poor women are saving, poor women are accumulating, poor women are creating growth. Uh, it was followed by a viable strategy in a cost-effective manner and a sustained process of development. The change from indebtedness to oppression to productive employment, growth and empowerment happened in a particular sequence of four stages that I will highlight. I will highlight it alongside this SDGs. SDG one, which you mentioned, Madam, end poverty which is the overarching uh, SDG. So moving away from poverty after loaning process, gender discrimination and indebtedness, ICNW, the Indian Cooperative Network for Women, created an alternate new age social co-op model, 
evolved by poor women, participated by and for them. So on their own terms, easy interest, easy installments, uh, support services, and credit groups infusing leadership, con uh, confidence, and training so that they were uh, able to take on the world, that integration. They had no unions when we started because the unorganized sector has very little uh, union. Just one? Okay. Uh, <laughs> today they are shareholders, board directors, creators of a new accumulation process, trained in financial literacy, uh, and uh, trained in uh, uh, cooperative consciousness. Goal two, end hunger, achieve food security. With debt, uh, debt burden lessened, with multiple loans and supports, diversification, growth of enterprises, better household food security was possible. Social action on food security, such as fighting against the public distribution system, was important for them to ask for an entitlement for food. Third, healthy lives and well-being. Income doesn't bring in immediately uh, health because of the reproductive process and large families. So therefore, we have a thousand co-ops, healthcare co-ops, managed by health leaders in MCH birth spacing. As far as gender equality to empower women and uh, girls, with asset creation and investing, including on the girl child, housing, sanitation, enhanced social status, dignity, and empowerment ensued. Emerging from the organizational power and collective action is a social platform of 50,000 women's groups making inroads into local government, generating a demand for government services, including schools, municipalities, the civic system, creating alternate structures with women as new leaders in the community and the household. As you see, I have half a minute left. I will uh, now uh, conclude by saying that, uh, the, you know, goal nine, building resilient infrastructure. We built innovative uh, banking infrastructure and architecture which was useful to poor women and therefore poverty reduction was possible. And they could bank, they could accumulate as shareholders and uh, multiple loans and insurance and financial literacy. So simple to uh, complex technology, a head loader could have a two wheeler today. So this is the sort of thing that has happened. So finally, I would like to say that a gendered model of sustainable development where poverty is plenty, but growth with dignity, not far off by four poor women, and that is what our model is about, the gender inequity model. I have literature available, and I would be happy to distribute after it. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I apologize. I hate to stop a woman talking about women empowerment. But, uh, but we have other women here in the panel. And by the way, I would like to congratulate the organizers because it's a perfectly gender-balanced perfect. panel. Man, it's not a man, no, 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 it's, it's a, a, a four-four. Thank four. you very much. So, and it's my pleasure now to invite uh, Mrs. Elizabeth uh, Philip. She's the advisor council member of the United Nations F uh, Federal Credit Card Union Foundation um, to take the floor. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Philippe, and I'm a member of the Advisory Council for the UNFCU Foundation. It's an independent nonprofit organization that was established by the United Nations Federal Credit Union, also known as UNFCU. As a financial cooperative founded by 13 UN staff members right here uh, in 1947, UNFCU's commitment to doing good has been an extension of its service to its members. With board insight and members' feedback, the UNFCU Foundation was formally launched in 2015 with a mission to sustain a path out of poverty through health care and education for women and children in developing countries and in New York City. On behalf of the UNFCU Foundation's Board of Directors and Advisory Council, it is a distinct privilege to be here to contribute to this discussion on the occasion of the International Day of Cooperatives, which underlines the UN Sustainable Development Goal number one, no poverty, with which the Foundation is very much aligned. Taking aim on this objective, the UNFCU Foundation has made a positive impact on the lives of more than 15,000 women and youth uh, beneficiaries in just two years alone. We focus on funding grassroots causes that are working directly with marginalized communities. Among our dynamic partners is UNFPA campaign to end fistula in Nigeria 
and the UN Foundation's Girl Up campaigns in Ethiopia, India, and most recently in Guatemala. And we track the progress and connect with women and youth on the ground. As I speak, Pamela Agnone, who is UNFCU Foundation's president and director, is returning from Kampala, Uganda, where she and advisory council colleagues visited another inspirational partner, NGO Keep a Child Alive. And that is an organization that is improving the well-being of women, children, and youth affected by HIV uh, AIDS through support services and economic empowerment opportunities. Uh, words cannot do justice to, uh, to an actual video, so I will uh, briefly share uh, one with you right now so you can see how together we're making a difference. We may. Eighteen thousand children die every day from poverty-related causes. Today, more than 62 million girls globally do not even go to school. Every minute, a young woman becomes infected with HIV. Gender inequality, health disparities, and extreme poverty can be overcome. But first, hope must enter her life. Hope arrives in the form of a doctor, an educator, a mentor. Hope creates and expands opportunities that are sustainable. We experience this every day at Keep a Child Alive. It takes collective power to make a difference. UNFCU Foundation is bringing us together to change the world. Our mission is to sustain the path out of poverty for women and children in developing countries and in disadvantaged communities in the United States. This is in line with the number one UN Sustainable Development Goal of ending poverty by 2030. From the grant applications we receive each year, we select results-driven projects that support our mission. In 2015, our first year of operation, we provided grants to five projects that empowered more than 2,800 women and youth on three continents. In 2016, we funded 12 humanitarian causes. So how exactly are we working to eradicate extreme poverty? Through improving the well-being of 7,500 women and girls affected with HIV AIDS, in Uganda's poorest and most overcrowded urban areas, Namawongo, through educational programs for 2,600 marginalized girls in India so that they can delay marriage and prevent unwanted pregnancies. Through mental health services for 750 of New York City's most at risk women and girls. Through the reintegration of 300 women in Nigeria who have suffered because of a largely treatable condition known as obstetric fistula. Through jobs training for 100 single mothers in Uruguay in partnership with local companies. These are just a few examples of how we're transforming communities by focusing on the education and health care of women and children. These stories from our partners underline the breadth and scope of our work. With a grant from the UNFCU Foundation, 100 young women across seven rural Kekchi communities in northern Guatemala have become business owners. Through this project, they've been supported to develop profitable livelihood activities and they have become members of self-managed savings groups. Trickle-Up's project is enabling women to flourish. I want to take this opportunity to just say a few couple of words about the work the Afghan Friends Network is doing in Ghazni, Afghanistan. And thank you, UNFCU Foundation, for supporting the Khorasan Learning Center in Ghazni. Also helps women and girls who have aged out of the education system and to achieve literacy and to learn vocational skills so that they can support their family and make a livelihood. And thank you, UNFCU Foundation. Your support is helping fuel their dreams. Thank you. Our mission is to end extreme poverty in rural Africa through entrepreneurship and innovation. And the UNFCU Foundation is helping us do just that. We are equipping ultra-poor northern Ugandan women with the resources to start small sustainable businesses and business savings group. By providing them with business and financial literacy training, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and business savings group formation, the increases in standard of living are profound. And thanks to the UNFCU Foundation, we are transforming the lives of these women and their families. Through the Kilimanjaro Initiative, the UNFCU Foundation has literally been moving mountains for many young women and men from disenfranchised communities in Nairobi, Kenya. With the support of the UNFCU Foundation, the initiative's annual ascents of Mount Kilimanjaro have been championing youth development. The climb helped me find my voice. I'm grateful for the support from both Kilimanjaro Initiative and the UNFCU Foundation. Now, 
As a member of Youth Without Walls, a community-based organization located in East Lee, Nairobi, I look forward to the next challenge up ahead. I've been a part of the leadership programs from the Long Island City YMCA, funded by the UNFCU Foundation. We participate in soup kitchens, volunteer to clean up parks, help younger kids with homework. This program has allowed me to gain leadership and team building skills that have allowed me to positively impact our community. Educating children, providing job skills training for women, and advancing the universal development agenda outlined by our global community ensures that no one is left behind. This is our shared goal, our social responsibility, our right now, and our future. I'm a girl with a dream. I want to become an actress. I want to be a doctor. A New York State emergency medical technician. A pediatric surgeon. I want to become a teacher, travel to enlighten children. I am a girl with a dream. I can be anything I want to be. <laughs>are very much part of the narrative, as you've just seen. So I encourage you to follow uh, and join us, uh, join the conversation on UNFCU's Twitter and Facebook uh, pages and visit our website, unfcufoundation.org, to learn about uh, the many activities and fundraising uh, events that are, are coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Elizabeth. Glad to know that my bank is doing such a great job. Uh, I, it's my pleasure now to uh, invite Mr. Marcio Lopez de Freitas. He's the president of the Organization for Brazilian Cooperatives, OCB. Marcio, you have the floor, please. Boa tarde a todos. Os convidados, os cooperativistas aqui presentes e parceiros. Caro senhor Vinícius Carvalho Pinheiro, como representante especial da Organização Internacional do Trabalho para as Nações Unidas, gostaria de cumprimentá-lo cordialmente e, por meio do nobre compatriota, estender meus cumprimentos aos representantes dos governos acreditados junto à ONU. Gostaria também de agradecer a Aliança Cooperativa Internacional e ao Comitê de Promoção e Avanço do Cooperativismo, pelo convite feito ao Movimento Cooperativista Brasileiro. Estamos muito felizes em participar da cerimônia em comemoração ao Dia Internacional do Cooperativismo, aqui na mais importante organização internacional. Good, Good afternoon to all guests, cooperatives and partners. Dear Mr. Vinícius Carvalho Pinheiro, as a special representative of the International Labor Organization for the United Nations, I would like to kindly greet you and all representatives of the member states of the United Nations. In addition, I would like to thank the ICA and COPAC for their invitation to the Brazilian Cooperative Movement. We are very glad to participate in the ceremony for the celebration of the International Cooperative Day here in the most important international organization. No Brasil, país de dimensões continentais, o cooperativismo está presente em todas as unidades da federação, nos 26 estados e no Distrito Federal. Somos hoje 13,2 milhões de cooperados em mais de 6.600 cooperativas, que geram 372 mil empregos diretos e colaboramos diretamente com o desenvolvimento social e econômico brasileiro. In Brazil, a country of large dimensions, cooperatives are present in all federation units, in the 26 states and in the federal district. In my country, there are 13.2 million cooperative members and 6,600 cooperatives that generate 372,000 jobs and directly collaborate to social and economic development in Brazil. Desde 2009, desenvolvemos um programa que muito nos orgulha e demonstra a força transformadora do cooperativismo. Estou falando do Programa de Responsabilidade Socioambiental das Cooperativas Brasileiras, o Dia de Cooperar, que teve início em um Estado brasileiro, Minas Gerais, e hoje já alcança 777 cidades em todos os estados, Atualmente participam mais de 1.200 
das nossas 6.600 cooperativas, com dedicação de 86 mil voluntários e beneficiando 2,5 milhões de pessoas, a razão do nosso negócio. Since 2009, we have been developing a project that makes us very proud and that shows the transformation power of the cooperative movement. I'm talking about the, soci the social environmental responsibility program of the Brazilian cooperatives, the Cooperation Day. This project is started in one Brazilian state, Minas Gerais, and now it is present, present in 777 cities, present in all states. Currently, we count on more than 1,200 of our 6,600 co-ops, only possible thanks to the dedication of 86,000 volunteers and benefiting a total of 2.5 million people, the reason of our business. Atuando de forma integrada, nós do sistema OCB desenvolvemos uma metodologia unificada que é repassada a todas as cooperativas, incentivando-as a realizar diversas ações de responsabilidade socioambiental. Guiadas pelo sétimo princípio do cooperativismo, o interesse pela comunidade, associada ao interesse constante à intercooperação, as cooperativas brasileiras têm mostrado que são qualificadas e preparadas para estar à frente de qualquer mercado ao redor do mundo. E elas são também instrumentos poderosos na cooperação para a redução da pobreza ao promover a inclusão financeira. Working in an integrated way, we, the OCB system, developed a unified methodology with it, which is transmitted to our cooperatives in order to encourage them to engage in activities focused on social and, env and uh, environmental responsibility guided by the seventh cooperative principle, conserve for community, combined with the constant incentive to intercooperate, the Brazilian co-ops have shown that they are qualified and prepared to compete in any market around the world. They are powerful tools in efforts to reduce poverty by promoting financial inclusion. O dia C, como chamamos, o dia de cooperar, é uma oportunidade de mostrar esse jeito mais humano de fazer negócio. Somado à qualidade dos produtos e serviços que oferecemos, assim a sociedade pode ver os reflexos da atuação das cooperativas, que vão além do seu negócio, beneficiando não somente o seu quadro social, mas também a comunidade ao seu redor, promovendo cidadania, bem-estar e qualidade de vida. The Sea Day, as we call it, is an opportunity to show this more humane way of doing business and the quality of the products and services we offer. This way, society can see impact of the co-op activities, which go beyond our business, benefiting not only the cooperative members, but also the community around them, promoting citizenship, well-being, and quality of life. São projetos que conversam diretamente com a Agenda 2030. Desde o início das ações do dia C, já seguiam na direção dos Objetivos do Desenvolvimento do Milênio. Nos últimos anos, identificamos uma relação direta com os Objetivos do Desenvolvimento Sustentável. A partir daí, passamos a orientar, capacitar e atuar, lado a lado, com as cooperativas para, contri para contribuir com o alcance desses Objetivos. These projects are directly related to the 2030 Agenda. From the beginning, the actions under the Sea Day were already concerned about the Millennium Development Goals. In recent years, we have identified a direct relation with the SDGs. Then, we started to guide, train, and act side by side with the co-ops to help them achieve these objectives. O segredo está em não perdermos o foco que faz do nosso negócio um modelo diferenciado. Ter no capital humano a sua grande força e trazer benefícios que não ficam restritos ao econômico, mas também são evidenciados na esfera social. Pensando nisso, instituímos um dia de mobilização nacional, no qual todos se unem às cooperativas, engajadas e realizam ações em locais públicos, fazendo referência ao dia C. É um dia de oferecer às comunidades serviços voluntários prestados pelas cooperativas. Essa é uma mobilização nacional 
celebrada propositalmente no primeiro sábado de julho, data em que comemoramos também o Dia Internacional do Cooperativismo. The secret is not forgetting what makes our business a differentiated model. Consider human capital our great strength, and not only bring economical, but also social benefits. Thinking over it, we create a day of national mobilization on which all people join the co-op's actions in public places. On this day, cooperative members provide voluntary services to communities. It is a national mobilization on the first Saturday of July, when we also celebrate the International Cooperative Day. Numa natural corrente de promover a transformação nas comunidades onde estão inseridas, as cooperativas brasileiras contribuem de forma simples, porém de, de, significativa, para o alcance das ODS. Elas fazem isso no seu dia a dia, em seu jeito de produzir ou de prestar seus serviços valorizando sempre as dimensões econômicas, social e ambiental, plantando as sementes para um futuro melhor. É, pedindo aqui para encerrar a fala, nós cooperativistas agradecemos a oportunidade e insistimos que o cooperativismo tenha certeza de que juntos somos mais fortes e podemos ir mais longe sem deixar ninguém para trás. Muito obrigado. In a natural trend to promote transformation in the communities where they are inserted, the Brazilian co-ops contribute in a simple but significant way to the achievement of the SDGs. The cooperatives practice in their daily lives in the process of producing and providing services, always valuing the economic, social, and environmental dimensions, seeding a better future based on ethics, transparency, and attention to people. We cooperative members work hard to play the important role of multipliers of the following message. We should always dedicate attention to people, the environment, and business sustainability. We cannot change everything, but we need to be sure that our commitment can make the replication of good actions grow and develop throughout the world. After all, those who are involved in the cooperative movement are sure that together we are stronger and we can go further, and without leaving anyone behind. Muito, muito obrigado, senhor Márcio, e peço desculpas mais uma vez por interrompê-lo. I'm so sorry to, to uh, stop your uh, statement, but uh, very glad to know that Brazil is doing a great uh, job in terms of um, the cooperative movement and, and its impact on the economy and society. Now it's my pleasure to invite uh, the last uh, speaker um, of the Cooperative Voices, Mr. Hiromi Ekatsumata, who is the Senior Managing Director of the Japan, Japan Cooperative General Research Institute. So you have the floor. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it is a great honor for us uh, cooperatives in Japan to make a speech at this event. Uh, today, on behalf of uh, Japan Joint Committee of Cooperatives, uh, JJC, I'm going to report briefly about cooperative activities of the SDGs in Japan. In Japan, uh, the cooperative sector includes agricultural, fisheries, forestry, consumers, workers, financial, and so forth. Our members reach 65 billion people in total, and the, and the annual turnover amounts to more than 145 billion US dollars. So we cooperatives in Japan are playing the very important role in Japanese society and economy. The MDGs, SDGs, uh, exactly correspond to the essence of cooperatives. Uh, passing the well-being of the people. Indeed, uh, the, uh, the Japanese government uh, regards cooperatives as one of the important stakeholders for implementing the SDGs. Currently, uh, cooperation among cooperatives in various fields are one of the key, key issues in Japan. A uh, cooperative could extend its potential by cooperating with each other beyond their respective fields and by grappling together with various challenges in the life of local communities. Uh, the first model of cooperation among cooperatives is as follows. Uh, there is a, a long history of cooperation between producers' cooperatives and consumers' cooperatives in Japan. Uh, members of each cooperative uh, could understand the actual circumstances by directly communicating with each other. 
Consequently, they could link their practices with each other, namely the sustainable food productions with the purchase of the safe foods. Uh, this cooperation thus allows cooperatives to fulfill the goal 2, uh, 12, and 17 of the SDGs. The typical example of this cooperation can be found in the cooperation between agricultural cooperatives and consumers' cooperatives in Fukushima Prefecture. After the Great East Japan earthquake and the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant action, agricultural cooperatives have been trying to remove uh, retroactive contamination uh, from their farm products and to reconstruct the farming industry in Fukushima. Consumers' cooperatives have been frequently visiting Fukushima and verifying the safety of farm products and purchasing them in order to support farmers through the agricultural cooperatives. Uh, the second model of cooperation among cooperatives is as follows. Uh, cooperatives in different fields begin the same or similar projects from their own views and leading the uh, new cooperation among them. Uh, poverty, uh, the growing gap between rich and poor, the gaining society are very crucial, crucial problems in Japan today. In this regard, consumers' cooperatives support their members by providing them with elderly care, medical services, and so forth. Uh, workers' cooperatives also provide care services for the elderly, children, disabled, needy, and so forth in relation to their creation of decent work. Agricultural cooperatives further provide medical care and elderly care in rural areas where the residents are rapidly aging. In this way, various cooperatives, businesses, and projects, which originally began from their uh, respective views, uh, develop further cooperation among cooperatives in order to achieve the SDGs, particularly the goal 1, 3, and 17. A conclusion. Again, I strongly believe cooperative activities and business embody the spirit of the SDGs. Cooperatives in Japan are already playing or will continue to play an important role in achieving the SDGs by covering all goals, fees, on the basis of cooperation and partnership among cooperatives. Thank you. Yeah, precisely. Many, many things actually you saved us uh, 40 seconds. So uh, <laughs> you are by far were the best performed um, speaker. Uh, so on that note, um, let me now uh, invite um, Mrs. Carla Mukavi. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have time for uh, the Q&A, uh, but, uh, but I hope Carla can uh, kind of summarize um, the discussions. And after she speaks, uh, if we have time, we'll show the video if this is okay 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 thank you Carla uh, Carla is my dear colleague head of the FAU uh, office for the UN uh, thank Carla you very much uh, Vinicio our great moderator I also want to recognize here the the DPR of, uh, of COF Japan uh, and also of course Daniela the director Dessa and all of you fellow panelists and of course the dear participants I'm really honored uh, to be here and to be able, I hope to be able really to present my concluding remarks because this was really a very, very rich mm. and insightful discussion. Uh, what I could really say in five minutes is that uh, it was really recognized by the panelists that cooperatives have really an important role to play in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for, for Sustainable Development. It was mentioned, of course, in all the goals. The goals are really interlinked, and the, it was highlighted the role that they play really to uplift, particularly not only the members, but all the society, from poverty, ending hunger, creating decent jobs. Of course, we really see cooperatives playing a role in all the sectors that really contribute to, of course, to attain the future we want, as you well put. Uh, well put it, uh, Daniela, and also other, other speakers. And it was also stressed that uh, cooperatives have to be inclusive, and actually they are inclusive and equitable, uh, as, well, as well as well-performing business. I really 
was really pleased to, to hear also from Brazil the experience and from Japan, from India, we see this important movement really be playing an important role in societies. So that by being inclusive and equitable, of course their work can be economically viable, ethical, environmental, responsible. Uh, it was also stressed that the people-centered, that really cooperatives are looking at the people at the first place. And uh, of course the role that they can really play to empower women and also to attract and empower youth. This is really very important. And uh, I also, of course, heard from your intervention the do deep roots of cooperatives within the communities, uh, which is really a, a very strong, uh, I would say, instrument to enable, of course, not only communities, societies, members, of course, to support uh, and particularly address the challenges that they face in the community, but also support them at the national, regional, and inter international level in order to come together and, of course, look at uh, the objectives that we are all want to see fulfilled. And also, the issue of collaboration from the intervention from Japan, uh, I really realized that co cooperation and collaboration among cooperatives across sectors can really foster the achievement of common objectives, uh, such as economic empowerment, creating of decent work, and livelihoods, education was also very strong, food security and good nutrition, market access. So those are the issues that I really consider really important, of course, to highlight on, of course, making this conclusion. And the issue of women, ensuring women's full participation in cooperative governance and administrative processes at all level. This can really also enable poor women to move from, of course, indebtedness, I heard it from India, and the deprivation that they face to productive employment, growth, and empowerment. So the empowerment of women also came very strongly and it was really very clear that cooperatives are really a very strong instrument to make it happen. And we have been also provided by very interesting examples of sustainable economic, social, and environmental benefits through cooperative models. And we have been also informed about, of course, the creation of the COPS for 2030 platform, which aim to position cooperatives as key partners in the implementation of the 2030 agenda. Uh, of course, Vinicio said that I'm representing also FAO. I just wanted to, to say that uh, on the underlying, particularly looking at food, agriculture, and sustainable, of course, nutrition, that cooperatives in address, addressing the multidimensional challenges of rural poverty and food insecurity, and in the transformational change envisioned of, uh, 20, in the 2030 agenda, it's, it's really something that uh, I consider important. And uh, we also heard today that uh, cooperatives and other forms of farm collective actions, they really offer innovative solutions, particularly to the lack of access to markets. If we look at developing countries, this is a big challenge. Productive resources, mm. credit and financial services, and they are also critical actors in the transitioning to sustainable food systems. I really wanted to stress that. Let me just conclude by really saying that uh, uh, we also recognize that it's really important, the policy, that the policy makers, and we, we are here, of course, sharing this platform also with the, with the representatives of government, uh, have really an important role to play by providing the enabling environment that are really needed for cooperatives to flourish, develop, and strive. And these conditions uh, include developing transparent and sound regulatory and legal frameworks, a climate to conducive to responsible investments, if I look at agriculture, but not only, as well as facilitating the creation of inclusive consultation frameworks and policy dialogue spaces between governments and uh, various stakeholders, including cooperatives and other collective action organizations. So I really wanted to bring the issue of uh, policy makers and creating this enabling environment that can really allow cooperatives really to play 
the role that they are already playing, as we can see by the examples of today. So let me just say that we are really all invited to keep this momentum uh, of today's celebration in really cherishing the contribution of cooperatives to the future where no one is really left behind. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you so much, Carla, for uh, this very brilliant uh, summary of that of, that you did of the panel. Uh, thank you so much, uh, dear uh, speakers, and apologize again to the audience because you're not able to do uh, the interactive discussion. And then, as a final act, yes. let me invite you to to watch the this little uh, video on the co on cooperatives. Ensure no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our world is changing, and rapidly. What can we do to overcome today's challenges? For many, cooperatives provide a solution. Cooperatives are enterprises created by and for people to serve their economic and social needs. Based on values of self-help, democracy, equality, and solidarity, and guided by principles inspired by those values, Cooperatives focus on long-term goals for the greater good, rather than short-term profits for a few. Through a cooperative, people can pull themselves out of poverty by creating their own economic opportunities. People can make their voices heard through democratic decision-making. People can unite to make their communities stronger. Anyone can join a cooperative without fear of discrimination. Cooperatives provide opportunities for those most at risk for being left behind like small-scale farmers, youth, indigenous people, and persons with disabilities. Cooperatives are an important economic and social force. There are more than 2.6 million cooperatives in the world, with more than 1 billion people as members. Cooperatives secure the livelihoods of 272 million people. The 300 largest cooperatives and mutuals have a combined turnover of 2.5 trillion U.S. dollars, more than the GDP of France. Through the Sustainable Development Goals, governments are pledging to build a better world by 2030. Cooperatives are equally committed to achieving that vision in an inclusive way. How do cooperatives eradicate poverty and promote prosperity? E naquela época, eu sei que contam histórias que ninguém queria instalar energia elétrica e trazer luz para o campo lugar do interior, porque era um morador aqui, outro lá, então o investimento era muito alto e não se tinha o interesse por parte do governo de fornecer energia elétrica e fazer esse investimento. Foi nesse momento que se teve a ideia, se fundou a cooperativa Sertaja e ela que proporcionou esses investimentos para nós aqui do campo. Foi uma mudança muito importante, principalmente para nossa região. Se não fosse pela cooperativa Sertaja nos fornecer a energia elétrica, Eu acredito que hoje Vale Verde seria menor do que é. Hoje a gente paga um valor que eu considero muito baixo aqui na área rural para o preço da nossa energia elétrica, o que vi acaba viabilizando muitas vezes um negócio de uma pequena propriedade que se o custo de energia fosse maior, não iria se viabilizar. कॉन्ट्रेक्टरांमध्ये <laughs> El nombre de mi cooperativa es Salaria, Salaria Limitada. Y actualmente mi cooperativa se dedica a la cultivación de cacao. Eh, aparte del cacao, nos ayudamos con la producción del arroz, banano. Para nosotros, como hijos de socios, ca cambió mucho, ¿no? En el tema de de que tenemos más, eh, más posibilidades de, en el estudio, eh, porque Seibo, Seibo nos da muchas oportunidades para poder salir adelante. Ya tal vez nuestros padres allá están quedando, eh, se están quedando cultivando el cacao, sin embargo los hijos 
eh, estamos saliendo ¿no? adelante, tratando de, de que crezca nuestra organización, es por esa razón que estamos aquí también como hijos. Eh, la verdad que sí, antes, bueno, en eh, mi cooperativa estamos en una población, era pequeña, y actualmente ahora se ha mejorado con el camino y todo eso, entonces ha mejorado mucho y hay más habitantes en nuestro pueblo. Cooperatives are helping to build a better world in almost every country, in almost every sector of the economy. But they need your support. Join them every year in celebrating the International Day of Cooperatives on the first Saturday of July and help spread the cooperative message. Policymakers at all levels should include cooperatives at the table when decisions are made to ensure they have the legal and regulatory environment in which to develop and flourish. Our vision of a sustainable future for all is achievable, but only if we work together. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much.